welcome to Abstract Boss. My name is Ashley. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to know if you have the right amount of glitter, texture, dyes, pigments, whatever it is that you're working with for resin, how to know that you have just the right amount. We are going to be working with a lot of different glitters, powder pigments, acrylic, oil, epoxy additives, and alcohol ink. So if you want to know the right amount to add into your resin for each of those, then stay tuned. What's this you say? If you want to know how you can get one of these awards, then stay tuned until the end of the video and I will let you know how. Yes. Yes, I am a good. Today I will be utilizing the KS resin and I will let you know what I think of this resin as I am working with the products. The ratio is still the one to one ratio and if you don't know how to mix resin then make sure to watch my video here or here, whichever corner <laughs> and I will make sure to put that up. I just put it out last week and I made sure to let you know my three helpful tips to making sure that you have the best resin mix every single time. So if you don't know those three tips yet, you better get on that. Let's get to this. I want you guys to remember to use proper safety protocols when working with resin. Once I get all that on, I will come back and I will do my voiceover and walk you through how to mix everything properly. Now I am utilizing my plastic cups. All of these I already used with resin and the resin came off of them. They're just those little bathroom cups that you get and so I'm curious to see how well they turn out when mixing resin inside them and I'm going to try tilting them upside down just like we would with silicone cups and peeling the resin out the next day. We'll see how well that works. That I won't be able to show you here on this video but um, I will update you on my stories with YouTube story and Instagram story so make sure you guys are following me there. I start out by pouring my resin into multiple small cups. The reason I do this is so that way there's not too much resin combined together. The thicker the amount of resin you have in your cup, the more likely you're gonna start that chemical reaction sooner. So if you notice, I do not have any of my pigments in these cups because you want to put them on top of the resin, not on the bottom of the cups and then pouring the resin in. So make sure you divide out your resin first so you don't start a chemical reaction sooner and then add your pigments. I'm gonna start off with acrylic because I know many beginners start out with acrylic. Acrylic's extremely easy to come by. You can get 50 cent apple barrel paint from Walmart versus a pack of alcohol inks for 10 to $20, depending on how many you're getting. Now, acrylic starts a chemical reaction quicker than the resin is meant to do though. Um, if you add too much acrylic, then you're gonna have issues with it expanding and heating up and smelling up your entire area that you're working in. So keep to this simple rule. Start with a small amount and add from there, but never add more than a 110 ratio. That means no more than 10% should be acrylic ever. So that's it, 10%, um, and that's a max. I really try to keep it as small as possible. I suggest you avoid acrylic unless you have to use it. Personally, I love to utilize powdered pigments. It's one of the best ways you can have something to color your resin and last a very long time, and I'll talk about that soon. Notice how I only use a few drops of the liquid acrylic. It doesn't take much. The regular acrylic paint, I just dispense a small amount on the end of my popsicle stick and mix it in. I used to have to use the white acrylic paint before I found good white additives. I don't like powdered pigments for my white though because they never turn out as opaque as I need. So that is why I ended up utilizing the white acrylic paint. But honestly, I highly recommend finding a good white that you like. Um, I do end up using the Armor White here in this video and I loved it. 
I honestly think that this is going to be the only white I will be using from here on out because um, I've been utilizing white pigment paste and they're a lot harder to work with than this was and so I was extremely happy with this and will be utilizing the armor white again in the future. Now we're going to treat oil paint the exact same way as the regular acrylic. It will give a slightly less opaque look but it's still pretty solid. It's not hard to mix in but it does take longer than anything else I add into resin. If you notice you can kind of see the initial ball just sort of hold back from mixing in. It took a little bit to get it to actually mix. Now we're gonna move on to the resin additives. I am trying out for the first time from Counter Couture DIY, the Aquamarine and the Armor White. I'm gonna show you how much it takes to get different transparencies with the Aquamarine. First, I followed the 10% rule. It was definitely way too much. And I just wanted to kind of point that out though, so that way you can see it's extremely opaque and I did not need that much in the first cup and it didn't really seem like it was a whole lot. Next, I just try a small dip with my popsicle stick and even that was a nice solid color. I wanted to see what it would take to make more of a transparent look though, just to give you a kind of a nice idea of what it would take for you um, to be able to get whatever you need for the projects that you're working on. So I took the smallest amount I could dip with my popsicle stick and then mixed. It gave me a beautiful transparent blue that I'm certain you can use for like a nice ocean pour. And here are all three made with the aquamarine blue and I love all of them. I'm gonna mix them all together though and set aside for my next project that I'm gonna record right after this video and I'll re release that one for everyone next week. Now here's the armor white that I was just talking about. The armor white is so beautiful and opaque. If you notice, I barely needed any of it to color this whole amount. It was hard to squeeze, but went a very long way. I wanna say it was maybe only one to 2% that I had to use. And that is fantastic because you're really gonna get your bang for your buck when it comes to these additives from Counter Couture DIY. Now the alcohol ink, this will be the easiest way to give you the most transparent look and you don't have to be as careful as you do with acrylic. Alcohol ink will still cause some resins to react quicker though. I start with a few drops and will add if needed, but I've never really had to go past the 10% rule. Resin alters the way the alcohol, mix, alcohol inks appear once mixed though, so you wanna have a small amount of resin set aside to try first with the colors that you're intending to use before you mix it into the whole amount that you need. This is gonna prevent mixing and trying to combine alcohol inks to get the desired color when you are working on a clock. Personally, I would make a key so that way you will always know what your alcohol inks look like when mixed in resin, and you will know exactly what alcohol ink to grab. I have a similar key for alcohol inks on top of like ceramic tile, and so that way I know what ones to use to get the great, perfect color combination that I'm looking for. Now we have the powder pigments. These are the easiest to work with. You only need a small amount and it is fully opaque. And most pigments from resin co companies are metallic and have a nice look to them. You can see I use a popsicle stick to grab a small amount and just mix it straight in. The pigment I chose had slightly too much of a yellow gold tint though, so I added a small amount of another coral from Patty's Pigments. That way it kind of softened that effect and it was perfect. I keep to the 10% rule here too, but honestly, sometimes have gone over. There isn't a chemical reaction that I've noticed that occurs with any of the powder pigments. So the biggest warning I can give you is the add it after the resin is in the cup and mix really well. Otherwise you're gonna get random bits of powder that pours out because you didn't mix well enough. Lastly, glitters and textures. Y'all know I love my glitters. <laughs> These are fully awesome additives that do not come with rules at as much as you want. Um, if you're mixing glitter though and don't want to see some clear resin in between, then you'll need to add like a little alcohol ink or a little bit of powder pigments to color that clear resin that shows up in between glitters. This does happen with the fine glitters as well. And so if you notice here, you 
really can add glitters into some that are already colored like I do here I add it right on top of my acrylic white and then you can also add glitters rocks and different glitters and mix them all together and just come up with something really cool and you'll see where I end up utilizing that in my project next week and I'm actually really excited for it I think it turned out awesome and that's it. My favorite are the powder pigments. I use them all the time. I do love accenting with metallic alcohol inks though because they have a good amount of metallic look that sit on top of the resin. Um, here's a video showing how to use the alcohol inks on top of resin. And next week I'll show you what I made with all these beautiful colors. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so you are notified. And now for information on how you could win one of the Abstract Boss Awards for the contest starting in June. If you don't know what I'm talking about with the competition, that is what this award is for. I have all the rules in my Facebook group. So make sure you go and check that out. Every week we'll have a winner and they get entered in for the monthly award. This will be handed out every month I am super excited about it. I will pay for shipping and everything, so you guys just have to get people to vote on your pictures and all the rules are in the group though. So make sure you go click the link in the description below and ask to join and I will add you as soon as I see it. All right, everyone, that's it. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Next week, I'm gonna walk you through how to create some beautiful agate style coasters Actually, they're like agate shaped, but just super cool abstract coasters because, you know, we're abstract bosses here. And I will walk you through how I do it. And then I will walk you through how I finish them before I list it on my Etsy, which will be available and also is in the link below if you want to get a piece of your own abstract boss creations. See y'all next week.